Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Falcon Heavy Flies. The FAA UAS Symposium is flying your way. And cosmonauts conduct record-breaking Russian spacewalk. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's February 9th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Wow, just wow. So many sights to be impressed by. All compressed into a few minutes of the first launch of the Falcon Heavy. SpaceX reached a significant milestone Tuesday with a successful launch of Falcon Heavy, carrying the red Tesla Roadster of Elon Musk as its mass simulator. The Falcon Heavy lifted off from Cape Canaveral at 1545 Eastern Daylight Time, 15 minutes before the close of its launch window, boosting the Roadster into an Earth-Mars orbit around the Sun. The rocket performed flawlessly in its initial flight. Three cores make up the first stage of Falcon Heavy. The side cores, or boosters, are connected to the center core at its base and at the vehicle's inner stage. With a total of 27 Merlin engines, Falcon Heavy's three cores are capable of generating more than 5 million pounds of thrust. Following booster separation, Falcon Heavy's two side cores landed at SpaceX's landing zones 1 and 2. Falcon Heavy Center Corps touched down near the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean, but reportedly landed hard and suffered extensive damage. With this successful first launch, Falcon Heavy becomes the most powerful operational rocket in the world by a factor of two. After the break, UPS commits to purchase 14 additional 747 ADF freighters. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. UPS has ordered 14 Boeing 747-8 cargo jets and four new Boeing 767 aircraft to provide additional capacity in response to accelerating the demand for the company's air services. All of the new aircraft will be added to the existing fleet and no existing aircraft are being replaced. The aircraft will be delivered on an expedited schedule, building on the company's 2016 order of 14 Boeing 747-8 freighters. All 32 of the jets will be delivered by the end of 2022. A South Korean military jet skidded off a runway at Changi Airport in Singapore on Tuesday, resulting in minor injuries to the pilot. A YouTube video shows the T-50 aircraft part of the Black Eagles demonstration team exiting the runway during takeoff, skidding into the grass along the edge of runway 1 before catching fire. The team was putting on a display for the Singapore Air Show. The Austin Court of Appeals has just issued a decision in a case involving the sky-high prices that Air Ambulance charge Texas Workers' Compensation Insurers. Workers' Compensation Insurance is a heavily regulated line of insurance. In fact, the state-mandated insurance policy requires workers' compensation insurers to pay lifetime medical costs for injured workers but also mandates that they pay whatever state law requires. The National Air and Space Museum has announced that nine major commercial airlines contributed gifts totaling $28 million to support the transformation of the flagship building in Washington, D.C. These are among the first major gifts received for the campaign to transform all of the museum's exhibitions and visitor experience. 
Construction is scheduled to begin in late summer 2018. Well, that's it for today's show around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The FAA and AUVSI will co-host the third annual FAA Unmanned Aircraft System Symposium on March 6 through 8, 2018, at the Baltimore Convention Center in Baltimore, Maryland. The symposium will bring together representatives from the FAA, other government agencies, industry and academia to discuss the latest issues related to the bourgeois use of unmanned aircraft and their integration into the national airspace system. There will be panels, breakout sessions, and workshops during the three-day event. As it did at last year's symposium, the FAA will operate an on-site resource center to help owners and operators with airspace authorizations, waivers, understating the Part 107 small UAS rule, and other policies and regulations. Economic prosperity and world-class leadership in this country begins with innovation, and the UAS community is leading the way. Don't miss this opportunity to get up-to-the-minute information on government regulations and to participate in hands-on collaborative discussions with the most innovative minds in the UAS field. ANN, as a pivotal media partner with both AUVSI and AMA, will be there to report. After these messages, cosmonauts conduct a record-breaking Russian spacewalk. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. Expedition 54 Commander Alexander Mazurkin and Flight Engineer Anton Skaplerov of the Russian Space Agency Roscosmos have completed a spacewalk lasting 8 hours and 13 minutes. It is the longest Russian spacewalk, breaking the previous record of 8 hours and 7 minutes that Oleg Kotov and Sergei Rozonsky set December 27, 2013 on a spacewalk during Expedition 38. The two cosmonauts opened the hatch to the Pierce docking compartment to begin the spacewalk at 10.34 a.m. Eastern Time. They re-entered the airlock and closed the hatch at 6.47 p.m. Eastern Time. During the record-breaking spacewalk, the duo installed a new electronics and telemetry box for the high-gain antenna on the Zvezda service module to enhance communications between Russian flight controllers and the Russian modules. The antenna system appears to be working normally. It was a 207th spacewalk in support of ISS assembly and maintenance, the fourth in Mazurkin's career and the second for Skaplerov. It's the fifth longest spacewalk in human spaceflight history. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and see you Monday.